Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. First, let me say how uh, pleased I am to be back with yeah. all of you. Um, I spent two months in rehab and I felt your love with your cards, your calls, and your text messages. Um, the people who operated the rehab came up to see me because they said, in the history of the rehab, nobody ever got as much mail as I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, your messages of love and concern carried me through a very difficult time. So, thank you. Um, I'd like to begin this sermon with a quote from Oscar Wilde. Where there is no extra extravagance, there is no love. And where there is no love, there is no understanding. In today's brief gospel selection from John, there are multiple themes for us to consider. Finances, death, loyalty, power, and emotional intimacy. While many of today's gospel, gospel themes may resonate with us in these times, what struck me most in about today's selection was the contrast in behavior and expression among Jesus, Judas, and Mary, and what it tells us about discipleship. Jesus, aware of his approaching death, has dinner with his friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, and the disciples. At that dinner, Mary anoints Jesus with expensive perfume, and Judas objects. Judas' objection focuses on the value of the perfume, which is estimated to be worth the laborer's wages for a year. However, it is not Mary who responds to the objection, but rather we hear from Jesus who exclaims, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The scene suggests that the disciples, especially Judas, have missed once again what Jesus has been trying to communicate to them. Jesus has been reminding the disciples that his time is near, meaning his death is approaching. The primary focus in this section is on death. Jesus is eating with Lazarus, a man who was dead and brought back to life by Jesus. Our focus then should be on death, how to prepare for it, and to remember the death of Jesus and its significance for us. Ironically, it is Mary, a woman, someone without status, who has heard and processed what Jesus has said about his upcoming death. Mary understands who Jesus is and what his mission is about. Using her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus indicates intimacy and a deep love. Mary's actions, which would be considered quite sensual by the standards of the time and her culture, would probably have created an uncomfortable situation for all at the dinner table. But Jesus does not stop her or rebuke her. In ancient Palestine, anointing in this way would signify a coronation or burial. Mary's actions indicate both. Jesus is a divine ruler who is about to die. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This statement by Jesus is probably the most puzzling concept in today's gospel. Is our takeaway to be that Jesus did not care about the poor? Certainly not. As an observant Jew, Jesus would know the admonitions throughout the Hebrew scriptures about caring for the poor, the widow and the stranger. By action and words, Jesus consistently brought good news to the oppressed and vulnerable. This resistance to the marginalization of the poor, among other issues, resulted in his execution as the political enemy of the religious and Roman authorities. Lutheran pastor Lindsay Jodry, in her commentary on this selection, posits that something may have been lost, literally, in the translation from the Greek. She suggests perhaps we should read this statement not as an indication of how things are, but as a command for what should be. Keep the poor among you always. 
The statement by Jesus then, which has been used to justify disregard for the poor, calls us to always have the poor at the forefront of our thoughts and actions. The poor you always have with you. This is an unfortunate fact. Depending upon where you obtain your stats on poverty and how the data was collected, as much as 48% of the U.S. population is considered poor or low, or low income. The top 1% of our nation's population owns 43% of the nation's wealth. And racial and gender inequality continues to contribute to the issue of distribution of that wealth. Having grown up in this area, it is impossible not to observe the growing gap in wealth distribution. The issue of lack of affordable housing and food insufficiency, such polite terms for homelessness and hunger, <coughs> is evident in our church parking lot on Tuesdays and Saturdays. But the requests for assistance are not limited to just those days, as any staff member or volunteer in our social justice programs will tell you. Community members seek the church's assistance regularly. Belmar, when I was growing up there, was a sleepy little short town of small houses and summer bungalows. Many of those summer bungalows on Ocean Avenue have been replaced with McMansions, ridiculously disproportionate in size to the tiny lot on which they have been constructed. Excuse my architectural judgment. <laughs> Access to affordable health care is often a major contributor to financial struggles. My recent fall resulting in a broken leg, ankle, and foot have made me grateful for having good insurance. If not for my economic status, would I be able to stand, literally, <laughs> stand here before you today as I review the insurance, as I review the insurance statements regarding urgent care services surgeon's procedures, the rehab stay in PT, it drives home the point that a simple accident can destroy you financially if you do not have good insurance. But health care should not be limited to only physical issues. The pandemic has highlighted the need for recognition of emotional and behavioral health conditions. Accessible quality care for emotional and behavioral health conditions, including addiction recovery, is essential to consider when we think about addressing poverty. Jesus came into this world demonstrating the love of God for God's creation. The incarnation is a tangible expression of God's extravagant love and grace for all. Too often we forget what that means for us today. Gospel stories set in ancient Palestine. Interesting, but how relevant today. Just as the disciples often miss the point of Jesus' mission, perhaps we do also. With so many distractions in our world, it's easy to turn inward and consider only our own needs and concerns. But in doing so, we lose sight of God's call to love all, to serve all. We lose sight of God's love for us and how we are to demonstrate that love in the world today. Poverty must be reframed. We make it easy for us to, to dismiss poverty when we characterize it as a personal defect. Lack of motivation, not smart enough to get a good paying job. Poverty is a structural issue and must be addressed with community solutions. When we get caught up in rules and traditions, we are Episcopalians. If we do something twice, it's a condition and it can't be changed. <laughs> We miss the new opportunities that God is calling us to, in which we are to demonstrate God's generosity. Today's gospel has multiple themes for us to consider. Finances, death, loyalty, power, and emotional intimacy. All of these topics are interesting for us to reflect upon during Lent, and these times of pandemic, economic upheaval, war, and the most significant refugee crisis since World War II. But this selection ultimately reveals for us John's conception of what discipleship means. Personal love and attachment to Jesus and his mission springing from an ever-developing radical faith. This radical faith calls us to live into the gospel message of serving the people on the margins 
who are there because our economy needs such stratification to survive. This radical faith challenges us to live in tension between the hope of an ideal world as portrayed in the gospel message and the reality of the world where capitalism creates unprecedented poverty in the midst of plenty. The poor you always have with you. We have seen this to be true. Jesus today asks us, do you want to change it? Amen. Amen. <laughs>